Welcome to Luxuriously Poor, and thank you for stopping by. I hope all of you guys are having a really great day. You know, I have watched a lot of videos over the years, and there's a lot of guys out there that are these hardcore preppers who think that they're they have a following, and it's all about the big bucks, and they have people that you know come along and they sponsor them. food they bought these machines that cost several thousands of dollars and a lot of people couldn't afford it and they can take meat and all kinds of food and put it in this machine and freeze dry it and it'll last them 25 30 40 50 years well there's people that live in these caves and they don't have a freeze dryer or you know a freeze dryer to freeze dry their food they don't have anything Watch videos like this. If you want to see the how to survive something that, uh, that's really, really bad, watch people who are already living as they did a thousand, two thousand years ago in caves. That will give you a far better idea of what you should be doing or you could do to try to prepare yourself for that. Now... You may not have any mountains towards you where you could even live in a cave if you wanted to. But they have some really, the way they cook, the way they eat, it's amazing. And they have no refrigerator, none at all. And they have no electricity and no gas. Now, don't get me wrong, some eat better than others. Some do, and some of them are extremely old. And you ask yourself, how do they climb up and down this? Because, see, they don't have running water. They have to walk down. Look up cave dwelling. You will be amazed. See, when I started looking, I already know how to live cheap. I do, because I've lived inexpensively all my life. And I know how to take a couple of items and make it really, really stretch. But I said to myself, what if it really, really got bad? There are people that are talking. See, they think the properties will be taken away from them. They're going to make it so that you don't have anything. I hear this kind of thing. There's videos everywhere about it. Well, if you're going to end up owning nothing, what are you, where are you going to live? What are you going to do? Look at this. There's people in Mexico. I've been there. I've met people. I've had friends there that... They didn't have anything. They built one room, and that was it. The husband, the wife, and the kids lived in that one room. Now, it was a fairly big room. I'm not saying it wasn't, but they didn't divide the rooms off or anything. And they didn't have gas. They didn't have electricity, and they didn't have running water. But they lived just fine. I spent a week with them on a vacation, and they lived there perfectly fine. Shocked, you know, because my mom had said that after the depression, a lot of modern conveniences came along. And with modern conveniences becomes control. Because anytime you want modern conveniences, there's a control behind it. And it makes your life easier, so therefore you're more apt to do as you're told to keep that modern convenience. Look at the people now that are told, oh, well, you know, you can't turn your thermostat up or down. You know, you got to turn it up or, you know, so that uh, your house is a little colder than you want it to be or your house is hotter than you want it to be. That comes with the modern convenience of electricity. Since it's not yours and it's theirs, they can tell you what to do with it. And then you pay a high price for it. These people don't worry about that kind of thing. They live, yes, it's hot. And there's some people that are willing to trade off every freedom they have as long as they've got electricity and gas. They don't care. Just give me my groceries, give me my food, 
give me my electricity and gas, and I'll do whatever you want. But there's people that don't feel that way. A lot of these people in these foreign countries, they live in these mountains. They didn't come down out of the mountains like everybody else did and choose to live in the city. They choose to continue to travel and be nomads, the same as some people did in Mexico. They travel, they've got land somewhere, and it has every kind of food you can think of, from bananas to avocados to oranges to tomatoes. They can grow anything on it. I have a friend from Mexico, and she says her mom and dad, where they live at, they never plant nothing. It grows there all year round because there's no winter there. And it's beautiful. They love it there. So, you know, when I think of what may happen in the future, I look to people who have no modern conveniences, who are not sitting on 50 pounds of this or 100 pounds of that, locked in a bin in their closet somewhere in a fancy house and telling you, oh, it's all going to end. And they're getting hundreds of dollars a month from YouTube to make that kind of a video. I look to people who have nothing but still can cook, still can eat, still can survive, and still have a laugh on a daily basis with their loved ones. That's what I look to. I don't look to people who sit in fine houses, pretty farms, and they're standing in their air conditioning kitchen showing you how to can. I'm not willing to follow something like that because that's not how it's going to be in the end. Now, if you're just doing a few things because you want to pinch a few pennies and help yourself get along, that's fine. But if you're serious and you're very, very concerned, Look to people like people who live in these caves.